All right. So good morning, everyone, and welcome to our legislative update with Vicki Wallach. So we're eager to hear what she has uh, for us today and uh, a couple of bills that um, we heard from folks. It was she's going to talk about, of course, the increase to the fund, unassigned fund balance, uh, the minimum wage and support staff. And then someone else was asking about the bill on the at will employment. Um, but we all know Vicki, so we're glad to have her back. And I'm just gonna turn it over to you, Vicki, and uh, go ahead and jump right in. Okay, thanks. Um, in the, the, we'll start with the biennial budget. Um, as you know, um, the governor promised 55%. She's gonna stand by that promise. The, the Appropriations Committee, but, uh, in a unanimous bipartisan vote, approved that promise. And so I mean, I think your 279s will reflect 55%, which as you well know, is, um, is good for many of you, but for minimum receivers, it doesn't really change much. Um, they also, as was just mentioned, there's also a bill that was passed that increased the unallocated budget limit from three to 5% in general, at least that's how I'm reading it. And, and if Deb and Colin are, are on here, you can, oh, I'm sorry, if Deb or Tyler are on here, we could talk about that a little more. But that's what it looks to do in general. But then for four fiscal years, 22, 23, 24, and 25, it allows unallocated um, fund balance to go to 9%. And I'll send language if that helps. Um, and I need to get rid of something on my screen. One second, I'm gonna continue. Okay, good. Um, I'll send language for you to look at, but in general, I think that's what it does. Is, is Tyler on? I haven't seen him. Okay, well, ask questions for him um, because I've been running back and forth with the department on this, but in general, it's a good thing that we can, because we're gonna get quite a bit of dough from the federal government as well, as well as 55% funding from the state, um, I feel relatively certain you're going to want to be able to do something with that in terms of carry forward. Okay. So Dave Roberts just popped in. If you yeah. Want. Hi Deb. Sorry, we can Hi, talk. Hi everyone. <laughs> um, I'm going to talk about it, and I'm not going to talk about them quite in the order that you gave, but I'll get to everything. Um, I also wanted you to know, just for your information, that LD32 was passed, which provides um remote participation going forward uh, in certain meetings and it authorizes a public body um, to conduct public meetings by remote methods if the body adopts a policy that certain that talks about certain requirements i don't know if you guys have been finding that useful or if your school boards have been finding that useful i know they have um, but it we, it can be carried forward and it's not tied to the emergency. It's not tied to the COVID emergency, but it does require local action. Um, and if you want more information on that, I'll send it to you. Um, yeah, we'll take anything you want to give us. We'll board it out to the membership. Yes, because it's just, I think the COVID has changed the way we do business and in some ways made it better, uh, certainly for some of our committees. And we may want to utilize those tools after the uh, the pandemic is completely gone. Um, LD1509, an act to provide that Maine school bus drivers are eligible for unemployment insurance. Um, this bill allows school bus drivers employed in the school administrative units on or after January 1st, 2022, to be eligible for unemployment benefits regardless of whether the school bus driver receives written reasonable assurance that the school bus driver will perform the services in the second academic year. You know how those work. Right. Um, so does, that says that they are eligible for unemployment insurance? Yes. And the Department of Labor estimates the additional cost to the unemployment compensation fund to provide unemployment insurance to them would be $4.5 million during a period of un of low unemployment and $6.8 million during a period of high unemployment. And this, Deb, we can talk, we probably need to put some, and I don't know if she's really still on, but um, we probably need to provide some help for districts to understand this. I am um, still here. 
You are still there? Yep. Do you understand this better than I do? Well, I think the unemployment thing for the bus drivers is because there are so many districts that have contracted bus drivers and they are eligible by the nature of, you know, not being hired by a school. So I think that's where the push for this came from was equity among, you know, the same type okay. of position throughout the state. So that's where I think the, the initiative came from. And do you think it'll have a fiscal impact on districts? Yes. A huge one, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's why, <laughs> so we will put out more information as we understand it. Um, but this is a biggie. Okay. So Can I ask a question, Vicki? If I, and I'll try to answer it. All right, so we're already mandated. We don't have our own bus drivers, so this is gonna be weird for us, but for those that do, you're already mandated to offer them 26 equal pays. Right. Right. That's a mandate that came by last year. So now they can be getting paid in August and be claiming unemployment? Yes, because what they're getting paid for in August isn't for work being right. done in August. And the mandate is not to offer 26 pays, it's to offer pay averaging. It does not have to be 26 pays. It can be right. earned pay or 21 pays. It does not have to be, the law does not say it has to be 26 pays. Oh, so the so WRA- I didn't, realize, I didn't realize, I thought the pay average meant you had to pay them over a 12 month period. Absolutely not. Oh, all right, I'll reassess that. Thanks. So the WRAs for bus drivers are now worthless to the districts, right? That those of us that have our own drivers. The assurance letters, is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yes. I don't know if they're worthless, but yes, that might be a way to put it. <laughs> At because least if they can get, if they can collect unemployment during right. school breaks and summers, there's little reason to have them. Yeah, I wouldn't throw them out yet, um, but it, it specifically talked about the reasonable assurances were not, did not um, override this law, so. So what's gonna prevent ed techs and food service, yeah. any school year employees to get on board? Yeah, that's gonna be next. Mm -hmm. That's our worry. <laughs> right, right. So that's, this is a huge red flag. If I had one, I would be waving it because this was a very progressive legislature. This is one of the most progressive legislatures that I've ever seen in my time. Um, and so it, I don't know how much will come back next year. It's a short session, keep your fingers crossed. And then there's an election. I just wanted to get a little less progressive. I hope that doesn't offend anyone. <laughs> and how are we gonna get bus drivers to work during the summer now? Right. So did that definitely pass Vicki? Yes. Yes. Now, um, but it's on, is it on the table? I'm not sure if it's on the table. Hang on a minute. Okay. It's on the appropriations table. So that um, could be a good thing. That could be a great thing. So I will keep you posted. And what that means to some of you who are new to this game is that they have to approve the funding for what funding there is required. And there is some general fund funding in the first year. So there's funding from the state, but it becomes a full, it becomes your obligation by 2023. So, and, and I'll put out more information on this because I realize how interesting and important this is to you, but we will keep our fingers crossed that it doesn't come off the table, but I, I believe it will. I mean, I guess the only, you know, we can fight it saying they were offered employment. So why would they be eligible for employment for summer uh, for unemployment? If we say here, you were offered summertime employment. So why would right. you be able to collect unemployment when you were offered a position? Good point, Diane. That's what I was going to throw in too. You know, that could make a difference if they're actually offered employment and refused it, then they shouldn't be eligible. But then again, you got to fight it. Yeah, we, we have dug. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, I, I think that has to be the conversation and what documentation we need yep. to make sure we maintain so that we can fight every single one of those. Yep. And Deb, why don't we work together on some information we could send out? Yeah, we'll this. pull Doug in. The three of us can work on it if it ends up Jeez. passing what we can provide for advice. and Right. Because this is big. It's huge. 
it and is. We all, and, and you don't want it to spread to other um, bargaining units or whatever. So, okay. Right. So, all right, good. Um, minimum Vicky, wage. Oh, sorry, Vicki. When, oh, when is that supposed to take effect? I don't think it's an emergency. I'll have to look. Okay. If it's not an emergency at 90 days after they adjourn. Okay. So this when is it huge. Next this, summer? this is so huge for school year employees. I mm -hmm. mean, this is just yeah. one small group. This is major, major, major. It is. Well, understand it doesn't affect all school year employees yet. That's yeah. exactly the point. Yeah. <laughs> so no, 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 no. Yeah. But yeah. that requires and I will call on you to do it because I've said this to this group before. You are the financial experts. Your voice matters when you talk to legislators about, frankly, the devastating impact it could have on budgets, right? So we need to lobby if this stuff comes up for other units and lobby on this one if it's not too late. Um, but it's not, it's still on the table. And, and my concern is not as much budgets. It's finding people to work. Good Why would they work for us? I mean, any food service, any ed tech do summer school. I mean, there's just no, there will be no compelling reason for them to work for us during the summer and support the district. I mean, we're already struggling now. Oh, my goodness. Okay, let's put our heads together in terms of advocacy language that we can use, okay? Um, Another one, the 734 minimum wage for support staff, which was um, Lucy asked me about it when we first got on, um, $16 per. It's on the appropriations table. Um, so I'm gonna have to find out whether it's gonna get moved off or not. And if it's gonna get moved off, we need, but it, it's been passing. So my guess is it will pass. Okay. And when you say it's on the appropriations table, it, is it likely that it would be similar to how they are instituted the minimum teacher salary that in increments, they give us a little bit each year and decrease the amount they're giving us till it's fully on us? Um, it's probably gonna be fully on you. Um, the, the teacher stuff was very specific and it was inserted into the budget, if you recall. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen this. I'll do a little homework on it when I get off this call because that, I know that's another one that you guys are really interested in. So I'll do, I'll find out, but my gut is it's on you. And will it phase in? Even though it's 100% on us, will it phase in is a big right. And let me And let me see if there's any amendments. So, I mean, part of my, part of, there's like hundreds of bills so they, and they keep amending them. So let me see. So I'm gonna check that one, 734. And I'll just send the info to you, Lucy. Does that work? Yes, that's great. Thank you. Okay. Another really bad bill, but <laughs> but I don't mean to be a, a Debbie Downer here. Um, LD206, lead testing in school drinking water, major substantive rule, and it passed. And it requires, and our guy Ed Ants is very much involved in this, um, it requires all of you over time to test your water, which is not a bad idea, but the problem with the bill is that it had been proposed at 15 parts per billion, which is the federal standard for lead, you know, anything up above that is a bad thing. And it got reduced to four parts per billion in committee and it's passed, it's signed into law as a matter of fact. So a lot of you are gonna end up failing your lead test. That's my concern. And particularly in our older buildings, um, I'm afraid this is gonna happen. So we'll keep you posted. I'll, I'm gonna work with Ed and Deb to put out information around this, but um, A, you're gonna have to do the testing and B, you're gonna have to figure out the communication or your, your, your school boards and superintendents will to the public around this. Because four parts per billion is not is, is much higher or lower, however you wanna think about it than the federal standard. So we'll try to give you some talking points so we don't alarm people. I'm talking to you guys about it though, because if mitigation um, is happening, it's gonna cost some money, right? If you have to replace pipes and stuff. And who's paying for the testing? Um, 
They're going to give you tests for free, I believe. But that's the least of your worries. <laughs> um, the the bigger question is what happens if you if you get if you hit that four parts per billion. So, um, but I'll have to go back and look at the law. But I thought I'm pretty sure they were giving the tests at least a certain number of tests for free um, because they were trying to avoid a fiscal note to get this bill passed. The next one is LD 1411, an act to establish the Buy American and Build American Act. And I only mention it because I've warned you about it before, which is um, that you'd have to buy um, goods of, if, if they were over $5,000 per, um, you would have to buy from American companies, even if cheaper cheaper stuff was available. They took us out of the bill, thanks to good lobbying efforts. Um, and school districts right now are not in that bill. So I will, it's passed to be engrossed and it's, it's also on the appropriations table, but it's a small amount. I'll just keep you posted if anything changes. Uh, an act to provide equity in the state, income tax deduction for certain public employees, retirement system pensions. Um, I, I talked about this the last time I was with you. This bill phases out the income tax on main PERS benefits and allows retired teachers and administrators to receive the full amount. Um, and I think this will be of interest to many people. Um, it passed the appropriations table um, with a starting fiscal note of $7 million, but that goes to $25 million in 2025. So again, this is one we'll have to see if it actually gets funded. But I will let you know. So that wouldn't have an impact on schools. That's individuals, right? Because that's right now that's tax. Yeah, it's not on whole districts. It's on the people you employ. Right. Yeah, yeah. So if we had a retired return to work person, would it affect them or this is just affecting the retirement check they're getting from the public employees retirement system? It's just affecting... It's the contributions that you make each, right. each week. It's not taxed at the federal level, but when you do your state taxes, those contributions are taxable. Okay. So it's really an individual income tax issue is my understanding. Okay. We'll need to get some follow-up on that. <laughs> um, I don't know if you care about this one. Um, but there are conditions, we, I'll skip this one. It, it's school board participation by family members of school boards in some, in some bizarre world, they think this is a good idea. Um, that we, <laughs> that we would allow um, a school board may but not is not required to permit the spouse of a member of the school board to serve as a stipend employee on a contractual basis. Right now, as you know, that is not allowed. And it also allows the school board but is not required to permit a school board's member's spouse to serve as a volunteer. We have tried to keep a bright line there and this takes that bright line away in terms of, of who can um, work or volunteer in schools. And that was signed into law. I'm going to talk about this one because this one is very controversial. And I'm not, I guess I don't know if it has a fiscal note for you, but it could. Um, it's to keep all main students safe by restricting the use of seclusion and restraint in schools. Um, it puts a dramatic, and I, I guess it could, because I think if teachers were hurt as a process of this, I see the ripple effect. Um, it allows a dramatic limitation on restraint or seclusion saying can only be used if there is an in, imminent new risk of serious physical injury to uh, the student or another student. Um, and the, the serious physical injury is a, body, a bodily injury that involves a substantial risk of death, extreme physical pain, disfigurement, impairment. Um, that means you could not physically stop a student who is about to punch somebody in the face or stomach or push someone down to the ground. 
So it actually requires that the action start to happen versus trying to prevent the action. Um, we're trying to stop this bill in the Senate. Um, people don't understand the bill and I think it could lead to a huge amount of litigation. The next one, hang on. Is, let me get to one that you can't remember. Um, an act to increase the state share of the cost of health insurance for retired teachers. I talked about that the last time I was here. Um, it's an increase in state funding of retiree health insurance from 45 to 55%. Um, we supported it. Uh, it's, it's around $4 million annually. Um, it's unlikely, but it's not impossible that this could pass. Um, it passed both houses. It would require, and it's on the appropriations table. And the thing I will send you labor later, because um, I keep talking about the appropriations table, is some document that will show you what's on the table and then eventually what got moved off the table. I think that will be helpful, okay? So do they only have a certain amount of money that appropriations has available and then they have to kind of shop their priorities? Um, no, not necessarily. Oh, okay. Um, if it passes, it's, I mean, that sounds good. Like they have this pot of dough and then they hand <laughs> it out. But right. if it passes with a two thirds vote, it gets funded. Oh, okay. So yeah. um, we'll see what happens. And, and there is money around. I mean, let's go, if you go back right. to where I started, there's a lot of dough around, which is making yep. people a little crazy, in my yep. opinion. Um, LD52, we've talked about this before, that passed. That was an act regarding collective bargaining negotiations by public employers. This was a deal we worked with the MEA on. Um, and it's, it makes um, education policies related to prep and planning and transfer of teachers are now permissive subjects of negotiation if both parties agree. Oh. Oh. So collective this- learning. I know. <laughs> I know, um, but it's, it's passed and it's been signed by the governor. And it was a compromise and it was a compromise. I will tell you now that this bill seems tame to some of the ones that are being passed this year. Mm -hmm. So we're in a situation. Uh, LD 677, this is a really important bill. I need your help on it. Um, it's an act to improve, the title is an act to improve public se sector labor relations by amending the laws governing arbitration under certain public employee labor relation laws. Um, it allows binding arbitration on salaries and benefits. You know, and I know that that's the purview of the board. It's been that way since labor law was adopted it's done for a very good reason, which is we shouldn't be allowing outside arbiters to decide things that affect basically what you spend on school fund, you know, what you, you spend on schools. And it's passed both the House and Senate, and it'll be up for final votes this week. We're sending out a bulletin. It may have already gone out. We need your help talking to senators that's we're, we're never going to win it frankly i don't think in the house but you should probably talk to everybody in the house and senate to say how expensive this could be on school districts it, it completely takes away the control over the budget um mm -hmm. well it gives the board has essentially no ne negotiable ability right. because if arbitration decides there, exactly. Yeah, the, what's the point in negotiating if now education policy is negotiable, but you know salary and benefits that the school board is fighting on their side, it's just handed away by somebody that has no idea what's going on in the district in the community. Exactly, and and that is we the governor vetoed the bill. It passed two years ago. She vetoed it. We certainly hope if it passes this year, she will veto it again. But I would rather get, I first want to try to kill it, at mm -hmm. least in the Senate. So I will send out and down, I'll use your help on this. Um, yep. 
And because you guys know finance, you can explain to your senators, oh my God, you know, this is what this will look like if you do this. And, and it, it will bring home, I'm hoping to them. What's the time frame, Vicki, for when these are? Oh, immediately. The session was done. So no, it's they're, so they're coming in Wednesday, then they're going home. So you, we're, we started sending out stuff today. I'll send it out when we get off this to you guys um, or to you to send out um, because they're going to get through Wednesday. They're going to start Wednesday and they're going to try to finish Wednesday. And the, at the very least, they may go a little bit over midnight, but they want to get done before the start. That's the start of the new fiscal year, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So they, they are under a lot of pressure to do this quickly, which is also not a good thing, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna make me an honest woman, Deb. I gotta send that out to you today, okay? Okay. Thanks. It's just, it's, it's the one, this is the most important bill. It's the most expensive bill. Mm. Um, I think, did we talk about the six month public employee already? You might have touched no. on it before, not today. Yeah, okay. This bill has been improved thanks to our concerns. It, uh, it, the original intent, and De Deb and I worked on this, uh, I'm smiling. Um, we were in a <laughs> meeting, of, remember? <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah. Um, it, it basically said that the, uh, a person, it, it takes away that six month grace period or whatever, um, and says the employee is hired day one as a public employee. Okay. But the good news is they listen to us and, and it says that a person who has been an employee of the state or another public employer less than six months may be dismissed, suspended or otherwise disciplined without cause during the probationary period. And that was the biggest piece we wanted to get in there that, that you didn't have to have a hands-off approach to somebody just because they're considered a public employee from day one really what this bill now is about is that it allows them to join the union from day one. Mm -hmm. So it helps the MEA, it, which is, you know, whatever, the MEA and the, um, the state employees union, they can all become members from day one. But and we I have made it a better, we've made it a better bill and it's been passed to be enacted. I'm sorry, what? I was going to say, I think they can also file a grievance earlier than six months now. Oh, they, um, during the probationary period is not subject to the grievous and arbitration provision oh, okay. of the collective bargaining agreement. Okay, perfect. So it took care of that too. Yeah, they did the right thing. And you know what? It was that meeting we had. Good. People listened. Thanks to input from the field, we spoke to them and it made it a bad bill better. That's all I can say. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, an act regarding the treatment of vacation time upon the cessation of employment. This could have had a huge impact on us and it may still, remember it was gonna allow you to carry it, it. It talked about paying out paid vacation to all employees. Um, and I never thought they were really trying to capture us but then they used a superintendent as an example. And as you know, you have policies now to what you pay out when people leave, but this was going to be all paid vacation. It was carried over. I'm hoping it's going to die. If it isn't dying, I'll let you know. We're going to need to lobby against it. Um, an act. Oh, an act regarding 2021 municipal elections and town meetings. Um, it's a bill to address 2021 20, town meetings and municipal budgets. Um, and it gave you more flexibility. Um, if it, it specifies that the bill of beginning in January 15th and ending June 30th, 2022, and the end date of the emergency that you could do, um, you could, it, it basically allowed you why am I doing this? It specifies the bill's beginning, Jenny. It allows you to change your municipal um, town meeting budget adoption. It allows you to do it earlier, right, Tyler? What is this? Oh, 1274. Don't worry about it. Okay. It, it was more relevant in the in the COVID. I think we're, we're going to be out of out from under the any restrictions by the end of the month. And so I think we don't need to worry about it. Did any of you change your camp, your town meeting dates this year? 
No? Okay, then don't worry about it. An act to allow career educators to retire without penalty. Um, it was on the appropriations table. It was, it, it, you have an early retirement penalty. Um, this bill would have allowed, would, would have taken that away. I think it's carried over. I expect it's, I know it's carried over. I expect it's dead. Um, here's a proactive bill and I want your help on this as well. And Deb, you're gonna be involved, I'm sure. Um, they did pass a resolve directing the Maine Public Employees Retirement System to convene a working group to investigate public pension options. Um, for a long time now, um, going back to actually when Peter Mills was on the Appropriations Committee, they have been talking about looking at other options for pensions because A, they don't cover enough and B, it's getting very expensive. And so it, it calls for an interested group to work together and to look at those options. Um, and I would, I believe this is a very good thing. I don't know what will come out of it. We've, we've had them before. As you know, we don't have social security for teachers. So it, this, this topic keeps coming up, but doesn't get solved. Right. So I, I will let you know on that, but we, there will be another study. And the good news is, and then I'll take questions, is that an act to reduce property taxes of seniors in an amount equal to the cost of education died. <laughs> 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 the bill was dead. It, was, it, it frightened us because as you well know, there is, um, our seniors are a huge, and we are getting seniors are becoming a larger percentage of the property taxpayers in town. And so it would have been very harmful, at least to funding for education. So now I hope you have some questions for me or things you want me to explore. I have a question on oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Um, the ED2, the money for the 55 percent that you talked about in the very beginning. Does that go in effect? And maybe Tyler can answer. Are we looking at changes to the 2122, the current ED 279, or is that going to be the 2223? Um, once the governor signs it, then we'll we'll produce new 279 for fiscal year 22. Thank you. Yeah. And then my other quick question was: Is there a deadline now for remote meetings? And what do you mean by deadline? Well, that they can end, that they have to end and you have to do in person. So LD32. No, it allows it. And that's here. It allows them if you adopt a policy and we may look and try to develop a policy here for school boards um, because it, it wasn't COVID related. That was kind of the point of the bill that in the main municipal brought it up because it had been a helpful tool. It's not as, there has to be, hang on. I'm gonna just read what I have here. Um, it provides authorization, authorization for any public body subject to freedom, of, to freedom of Access Act to conduct public proceedings by remote methods if the body adopts a policy that meets certain requirements and remote methods are telephonic video etc the policy must provide that members of the body are expected to be physically present for public proceedings so you can't be completely remote except when physically present is not practicable um, they did talk about a far-flung body and often that is not practicable let's say you're it's a body that has members all over the state. The policy has to provide members a meaningful opportunity to attend by remote methods. Um, if the body allows or is required to provide an opportunity for the public, which most of you do, well, certainly we all do, um, they have to have a way to talk to the committee. Um, and, and you have to do, you know, notice 
All votes taken during a public proceeding using remote methods must be taken by roll call, obviously, because people wouldn't necessarily know who's talking if they're not in the room with them. Um, town meetings and regional school unit budget meetings may not be conducted using remote methods. And that was a specific amendment put on there. So I don't know, would this be helpful to people to have this opportunity? Have the opportunity as far as- Remote have... meetings? I don't know at this point. I think it is, but- I think each district is different as to how they want to conduct. So that all being said, and we, you say we need a policy to continue to do some remote. So what is the deadline for not being remote? So right now we're still all, a lot of us are still doing remote. We have not switched to in-person meetings. Does that mean as of July 1st with the governor's new order that we can no longer be remote barring any policy as of July 1st. I'm just trying right. to get a handle on this. But this was this bill has also been passed and signed by the governor. So I think this bill could kick in, but that's a good question. Whether this, I don't know if this was an emergency, I'll have to look. But yes, you're gonna run out of time, I guess at the end of the, well, yeah, at the end of this month because the emergency is gonna go away. Is there any protections for a certain amount of days after the emergency ends? Like once she declares it's an, an, it ends, is there a amount of time where people have to transition? I don't know. And because that's a whole separate issue, I'm gonna right. have to find out. Right. Um, I mean, but I would certainly, this is, for those of you who know how to do this, go to the legislative website and look at LD32, it's worth, looking at this and talking to your boards about if you want to get this moving. Um, because I think it will, I think we've gotten so used to being able to do this, that this, it would be very helpful if we could continue in some fashion. And I will look and see if there's anything on 32 or any of these others that are affected by when the emergency ends. And whether, and I'll ask the governor's office if there's going to be any grace period. Other questions? There were um, a few bills out there related to CTE schools. Do you have any updates on any of those? I don't have um, specifically what those were. Uh, but how about the fund balance? Does that apply to CTEs as well as to K to 12s? Deb, help me out here. If the fund, if the fund balance, if it's a CTE um, connected to a school district, that's the school district's deal. But you're talking about, yeah, I don't know the answer to that. Do you know, oh, Tyler? I, I do. So the, the oh, CTE good. fund balance is because that's a restricted fund balance, doesn't get included within the, the restriction. So that, that amount wouldn't get included in the 3% or 9% or 5% anyways because it has to be spent on CTE. So it doesn't matter whether it's a region or a center? No. Same, same, same thing. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Joya and Sherry, did you guys have any specific bills you were looking at for the CTE regions or center? I've been I've been watching all the all the CTE bills coming through, but I haven't seen anything pass yet that was a concern. Um, I think a lot of it's going to be next session. Okay. Thanks. Um, we've got a couple questions on the new the earned paid leave. Did they make any changes or amendments to that EPL bill that was passed last time? Hey Tyler, what was the EPL EPL bill passed last time? Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember exactly on that one. That I think was they one were that Joanne to work, was tracking. Whoops! I think Vicky, they were trying to work on um, 
helping with substitutes because we pay them half day, full day versus hourly. We had a conversation about that at some point this spring, but I don't know if that went anywhere. And coaches as well, because there's no real mechanism for coaches and substitutes to get paid okay. the earn paid leave. That bill died. Okay. Of course, of course it so did. no changes then. No changes. Yeah, I remember looking at it yesterday. And if I'm wrong, I'll correct myself, but I'm almost 100% sure that it died. It died even in committee, maybe. Yeah, I knew we hadn't talked about it for a while, so I figured probably it yeah, it, we were trying. <laughs> we were, <laughs> but um, I'm quite sure it died. Okay. And Sorry. Then I had someone ask about the LD 553, the at-will employment. 53, hang on a second. Give me one second. Okay. It's dead. It's dead. Yeah, it failed. Um, it was in non cur So one, one of them, the House or the Senate voted for it. The other body voted against it. So it died in um, what they call non-concurrence. Okay. Thank you. Yep. I think we had all the questions that were in the chat. Does anyone okay. else have any questions they want to throw out? Lucy, I saw one that Lisa had when we were talking about the um, eliminating the income tax on main PERS contributions. And she yes. said, they won't, won't they fund it by an increase to em the employer match? So this bill doesn't have anything to do with funding the main state retirement system. <clears throat> so it wouldn't be through employer match. This is income tax. So right, main right. PERS contributions at the state level currently, you can't reduce those for your from your income before you get assessed your income tax. So it would be something, it would be lower income tax for the state and they'd have to figure out a way through that revenue stream. It's not to do with funding the retirement for people. So it's two different things. I don't know if Tyler wants to add anything on that or, okay. Thank you. I think LD 1509 is one of the scariest ones around the bus drivers. Yes. That one is just mind blowing to me. It is. I'm scared because it, it's just the precursor to the, like you said earlier, the rest of the school year employees. That's what Doug and I have said. Yeah. And you know, Deb, we need to, we, we, we are going to, the three of us have, we'll put our heads together and try to be proactive because your, I think your concerns are founded that once one of those goes, the others could follow in terms and of. And I think adding Diane's piece about summer work too, or, you know, even during vacation week, sometimes they'll have a little mini extended um, program for kids that are struggling. And if they're getting unemployment, how are you going to get the kids to, to and from school? But I, for me, one of the frustrating pieces, because I, I have a few bus drivers in one district, um, but not like some of the numbers the other districts would have, is just when they were hired, they understood they were school day, school year, school year employees. So if there's no school on Christmas vacation week, you're not working because there's no bus move running. So you knew that when you were hired, same thing. If you don't right. have school during the summer, you know you're not working. So you were hired understanding those terms. So I just, I struggle with, <laughs> with that. Now you can go claim unemployment when you knew coming into the job exactly what the terms were. Yep. I think it even has more outreaching consequences besides the fact of other school year employees petitioning for unemployment. But also in my area, at least schools that have their own transportation pay a much higher rate than like a bus company. Mm -hmm. And kind of that offset is always that because they aren't getting unemployment, now they're gonna get the best of both worlds. So on one yeah. avenue, I can see it might help schools be able to um, recruit and retain drivers, but it's gonna be a real hurt on those private companies. Either they're now gonna to have to offer a higher rate of pay or they're not gonna find drivers. Right. Mm -hmm. If you, if a group of us, Deb, maybe you can help me. If we could put our heads together later this afternoon or later today sometime. Get me, let me, wait, let me just finish. Get me some talking points. This is still on the table. 
okay? This hasn't passed yet. Yeah, because I'm wondering why we're just hearing about this. And I work for two different superintendents and neither of them have knew anything about it either. So, you know, it seems like it's kind of sliding through without really the people that are being impacted know anything about it. At least it was news to me. I think um, when we were talking about the unassigned fund balance previously, uh, a bunch of us from the executive committee put together a document and sent it on to Vicki to take with her to share what our concerns and issues are. So if any of you would like to send some information and how it impacts your school, your region, uh, if you want to send that to the main ASBO email address and we can compile that and put it together and send it out to Vicki and Deb to be able to use. But the Deb, it's, it's immediate need because they're going to session on Wednesday. So if you can right. send this in the next, you know, today, Monday, so that we can compile it and send it on, we can certainly exactly. do Exactly. And we certainly opposed it. We stood up and opposed it in here. Right. right? Yeah. But I don't, and I mean no disrespect. The Labor Committee was on steroids. They had the votes and they've been waiting. I mean, there was a conservative, you know, there was a conservative governor for a while and then and a conservative legislature, which is really more up to the point right now. Um, and now it's a more progressive legislature. So they're trying to fix everything that ever happened. <laughs> but this one is really bad. And it, I think it has so many unintended consequences that people did not understand. Mm -hmm. So if you can get us, and Deb, is that okay that we would work on that together today? Sure, yep. Thanks. And I think too, you know, this is just a testament to how important the legislative committee is for MASBO, you know, to be on top of the bills. I mean, we try our best, but um, to really, you know, take a look at the beginning and really advocate and be the liaison to make sure that the message is getting out to MASBO members so that, you know, if you want to testify or send in any testimony that you would know earlier. Well, there were so many bills this year. I know it's, it's, it's overwhelming. And, so, and I don't even know, honestly, like Vicki said, if it would have made a difference, but I do, you know, putting myself in your shoes, you know, to hear it the first time today, knowing it's the 11th hour and it's so such a big deal. Um, mm -hmm. you know, but. And, and, and actually don't feel bad though. Most of the stuff gets done in the legislature at the last minute. Right. Because the legend, think about it. Think they don't hear about these bills if they're not on that committee. So this is a, actually a good time. It's front of center now. Let's um, let's put a, a full court press on it. So yeah, everyone, um, send your. I put the main ASBO email address in the chat. Uh, so if you've got some comments that you want heard, uh, send those to that uh, main ASBO address, and we'll compile them and get them out to Vicky and Deb, and they can uh, put them to work. Okay, good. Does anyone have any more questions on any other bills that you're familiar with or heard of and want to know what, where they landed? Okay, doesn't look at, at the moment, so. Uh, thank you very much, Vicki and Deb and, and Tyler for jumping in too, and all of your questions, everyone. And this meeting is recorded. We'll get it posted up to our YouTube channel so you can go back and, and review it. And we'll compile whatever you send to the main ASBO Gmail address and uh, get that submitted as well. Uh, but have a great day and enjoy your weekend. Thank you all. So Lucy, you would want it to be by this afternoon so that way you could compile them and get them to Vicky, uh, so I was even Monday at the latest. Monday at the latest. Would that Monday work, Vicky, by Monday? Yes, because they're not coming back till Wednesday. And so I could go run around. You know what I mean? They'll no. start to trickle in. So, okay. So Monday. Perfect. Does that work for you, everybody? Okay. Okay, great. We'll Thank you. Monday afternoon. Thanks, guys. Have a great Thank week. you, Lucy. You're welcome.